Okay, this is the part two for lesson 3.3, .3, properties of logarithms. We're going to do the addition rule and subtraction rule for logarithms in this video. We'll start with proofs and what those addition and subtraction rules are. First, if we have two logs with the same base added together, this is what we'll call the addition rule, then we can write those as a single log with the same base and the product of what was inside the original two logs added together. Now, that may not make a lot of sense to you, so we're going to prove it. I'm going to start by letting x equal log base b of m and y equal log base b of n. I can do that because I didn't have x or y defined anywhere before this, we started this proof. I'm going to convert each of those equations to exponential form. So the first equation is going to become b to the x equals m. And the second equation is going to be b to the y equals n. And now using some really basic algebra and substitution, I can say that b to the x times b to the y, this times this, has to equal m times n. If b to the x equals m and b to the y equals n, then b to the x times b to the y equals m times n. Properties of exponents, let me say that this is going to be b to the x plus y. And now I have an equation in exponential form where this is the base, this is the exponent, and this is what it's equal to. I can convert that back to logarithmic form, and it becomes log base b of what's not the exponential term is equal to the exponent itself. And recall when we first started this proof, we defined x and y as log base b of m and y as log base b of n. And that's the proof square means we're done the end of the proof that's the proof that we can take the log base b of m plus log base b of n as long as the bases are the same and combine them into a single logarithmic expression and multiply what was inside uh, i'm going to go ahead and prove to you the subtraction rule also very very similar subtraction rule says log base b of m minus log base b of n we have two logs same base subtracted one from another then we can combine those into the same log with what we had, the difference becomes a quotient. So we're gonna prove that to you as well. We're gonna start the same way. We're gonna let x equal log base b of n, or sorry, m, and y be log base b of n. Then we're going to start with, instead this time, we're gonna do b, well, we all, sorry, we're all going to convert to exponential form first. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Now we're going to do oops, b to the x divided by b to the y, and that has to equal m divided by n. When I'm working through proofs, I always look at what I've started with. That's my assumption. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to work towards the goal. So when I see that I need an M times N here, I'm looking for a way to get it in the middle of my proof with valid, viable mathematical arguments. We know the properties of exponents tell us that this is B to the X minus Y. And once again, I have an exponential equation. I can convert to logarithmic form, log base B of M divided by N is equal X minus Y. And once again, we started by letting X equal log base B of M and Y equal log base B of N. So we have the proof log base B of M divided by N is equal to log base B of M minus log base B of N. And we're finished with that proof. So what does that mean? How can we do that? We can evaluate logarithms that we couldn't easily evaluate before. If I said, let's find log base six of four plus log base six of nine. Now, 
you probably, unless you're an absolute genius, there's memorized logarithm tables. Uh, and I don't even know where logarithm base six would be in the tables, but uh, log base six of four, you probably can't tell me what power of six gives you four. You probably can't tell me what power of six gives you nine. But if we use that property that says we have two logs, same base added together, that becomes the same one single log, same base of four times nine. Well, four times nine is 36. So we have log base six of 36, which is easily evaluated because we know that the power of two or power of six that gives you 36 is two. So log base six of 36 is just equal to two. Likewise, if we had log base, whoops, log, just 2,000 minus log 2, individually, log 2,000 is the power of 10 that gives you 2,000. I don't know anybody who knows it off the top of their head. Log base 2, or sorry, log 2 is the power of 10 that gives you 2. I don't know anybody that knows that off the top of their head. But when I apply this division rule or the subtraction rule, I have log, same base as 10, understood base of 10, of 2,000 divided by 2. That's just log 1,000, which is an easy power of 10 to spot. And we could say that's just log, the power of 10 that gives you 10, or 1,000 is just 3. So log 2,000 minus log 2 is 3. If we were looking at something like, um, log 250 minus log five, uh, log base five. Sorry. Log base five of two. So look for. Okay. Sorry, trying to make these up as I go. If I look at that, I don't know what power of five gives me 250. I don't know what power of five gives me two, but I do know using that the subtraction rule that this is equal to log base five of 250 over two, which is log base five of 125, which is just three. And so those are ways we can use the addition and subtraction rules to evaluate logarithms. Now, what about solving equations? What if we had a logarithmic equation that said log base four of, let's say, x plus one minus log base four of x plus two was equal to one half. We can bring those into a single log. So we can say that this is log base four of x plus one divided by x plus two. And this equals one half. Now we can convert this to exponential form and say this is four to the one half power equals x plus one over x plus two. Well, four to the one half power, that's the square root of four, that's just two. So two equals x plus one over x plus two. Multiply both sides by two and we get two x plus four equals x plus one. When I subtract x from both sides, I get x. And I add subtract four from both sides, I get negative three. So this would be x equals negative three. Now here's where we have to be careful because this looks like a solution, but it's what we call an extraneous solution. And we call it that because it cannot be in the domain of the original problem. If we plugged negative three in here for X, we would get log base four of negative three plus one, which would be log base four of negative two. And we can't have a negative inside the log because this is impossible. This can't be a solution. So the original equation has no real solutions. And it's possible that you'll get some like that in these. So let's see if we can find one that does have a solution. And let's say we have log two plus 
log 3x minus 1 is equal to 2. Now, right now, because of this log 2, I can't just combine 2 and log 2. I can't say it's log 4. I can't say it's log 0. I can't do anything to combine the log 2. Those are different. They're not like terms. So what I'm going to do now is notice that I've got the same base added together. So I'm going to bring them together as a single log. And I get log. And I multiply 2 times 3x minus 1 to get 6x minus 2. And that equals 2. And now I have a logarithmic equation I can convert to exponential form. And so this is 10 squared equals 6x minus 2. 10 squared to 100. And so I add 2 to both sides. And I divide by 6 on both sides. And that looks like that's going to be, this is going to go in there 17 times, I believe. And so that's a way we can use this addition property to solve logarithms. Sometimes we'll end up with uh, a quadratic when we do this. Let's say we have log 3x. I'll just decide the base here in just a second. Plus log x minus 3. And let's use this as base 4. And let's say that equals 1. I've got the same base, two logs added together, so I can bring them together and multiply and get log base 4 of x squared minus 3x equals 1. I have a logarithmic equation I can convert to exponential form, get 4 to the 1 equals x squared minus 3x. That's an x, it's a quadratic equation, so I have to get it equal to 0 to solve. I get x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. I can factor that, the x minus 4 times x plus 1. And we know that when we solve that, we get x equals 4 and x equals negative 1. But once again, if I plug in negative 1 to my original equation, that's an extraneous solution because I can't have a negative inside the log. So that one's gone, and x equals 4. I can plug in and get log base 4 of 4. That's a valid answer. Or log base 4 of 1. That's a valid answer. So x equals 4 is my solution to that equation. And those are some examples of how we use the log addition subtraction rules.